Hello students. In the previous videos, we gave you a quick look at the Pythagorean theorem and the sort of questions that it's useful for. We also had a look at um, two types of numbers, rational numbers and irrational numbers, which together make up the real number system. And then we did a quick review of squares and square roots. So what we're going to do now, of course, is actually use Pythagoras to find unknown side lengths of triangles. So just a quick reminder, the Pythagorean theorem basically says if you've got a right angle triangle and um, with the side lengths of A, B, and C, where C is the hypotenuse, the area of a square drawn on the hypotenuse has an area of C squared, just length times width, because that's C also. And on the other two sides, called the legs, that square has an area of A squared, and this squared has an area of B squared. And all the Pythagorean theorem says, which is really quite remarkable, that for any right angle triangle, C squared, the area on the hypotenuse, equals the sum of A squared plus B squared. And that's for any right angle triangle. So we're going to use this now to find the side of a triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So up here on the right, we have a triangle, right angle triangle. We know the lengths of the two legs are four units and seven units, and we're gonna use that to find the length of the hypotenuse. And again, we don't have to measure it. Um, Pythagoras will give us the answer to as many decimal places of accuracy as we want. So here's the setting out for uh, questions like this. The first thing I always do whenever I'm working with uh, the Pythagorean theorem is I label the three sides of the triangle A, B, and C. Now this one's already correctly labeled, but usually it's not, so I'll put another C there. Hypotenuse is always labeled as C. Either of those sides could be A and B. I just by default make A the smaller side and B the larger side of the two legs, but I don't have to. It could be the other way around. So step one, label the three sides of the triangle A, B, and C. The next thing we do is we write down the Pythagorean theorem. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. To find the length of C, what we have to do first is to substitute. Now, C we don't know, so I just write C squared. A is equal to 4, so I get 4 squared, and B is equal to 7, 7 squared. The next step is to just simplify the right-hand side. So 4 squared is 16, 7 squared is 49, and add those two together. Well, 49 plus 10 is 59, 59 plus 6 is 65. So now we've worked out that C squared equals 65. So how do I find out what C is? Well, I have to undo squaring. The inverse operation or opposite operation to squaring is square root. So I take the square root of that side. And when you're solving equations, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So on the right hand side, the square root is 65. Square root and squaring cancel out, leaving just C, and that's my answer. The length of the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle is the square root of 65 units. And that is the exact answer. Now in practice, we don't want to leave our answers as square roots. Like if you told a carpenter to build a, um, a beam, a square root of 65 units long, he might hit you over the head with the beam. So um, what we have to do now is actually round that off. And as it says here in the question, we, in this case, we're gonna round it off to one decimal place. So to do that, we've got to work out what the square root of 65 is. So I go and grab my calculator type in square root 65 
And there it is with lots of decimal places, but I'm just rounding it to one decimal place. Well, the first decimal place is a zero. I look at the digit behind it, which is uh, five or bigger. Therefore, that uh, point zero rounds up to point one. So the answer is C equals 8.1 rounded or approximate answer, rounded to the nearest tenth. And that's all there is to using Pythagoras to finding unknown sides. And again, it works for uh, any side of any right angle triangle. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to stop the video and get out your exercise book if you don't already have it out and go ahead and find the length of side K once again rounded to one decimal place. Okay, welcome back. Now the first thing you should have done is copy the diagram and hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. So that's where the C goes. I choose the smaller of the two sides, the two legs to be A and the other one to be B. So always start by labeling the sides of the right angle triangle. The next step, write down the Pythagorean theorem. In place of A, I put 8. In place of B, I put 10. Well, 8 squared, I'm going to do this one in my head. 8 squared is 64. 10 squared is 100. So that adds up to or simplifies to 164. I now have to get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancel out. And there's my exact answer. Square root of 164. And I've got to round that to one decimal place. So I go grab my calculator. Square root 164. Well, that's interesting. I've got another 0 0.80 again. So in this case, it's 12.80. Uh, so it's going to round off to 12.8. Since that number there is less than, uh, less than 5. So the answer is 12.8. And because I don't have, oh, I do have units on the, let me undo that. And in this case, it's meters. So round it off to one decimal place. The length of the hypotenuse is 12.8 meters. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> what if we know the hypotenuse, but we don't know one of the short sides? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it, but the way that I do it is pretty much the same as uh, the method I used for finding the hypotenuse, but with one extra step. So I'll show you my method of doing it, and your teacher might show you a slightly different way of doing it. I still start by writing a C on the hypotenuse. Because this already has an A on it, I think I'll just keep the A there, even though it's not the shortest of the two legs, and I'll put a B just there. And I start exactly the same way by writing down the Pythagorean theorem. The other way of doing this, by the way, is to rewrite that equation to make A the subject. So you'd subtract B squared from both sides and end up with A squared equals C squared minus B squared. And then you use that equation to solve for A. So I'm going to do it this way, but uh, the other method is equally good. Now, C is equal to 9. Oops, I better do this, better show all the working, otherwise I'll lose some marks. A, I don't know, so that stays as an A, and B is equal to 6. Okay, now I'm going to turn these into numbers, so I'll square 9 and get 81. I'll square 6 and get 36. Okay, here's the extra step. A is not by itself on the left-hand side of the equation. So what I'm going to have to do is to get rid of this 36. So the opposite of adding 36 is subtracting 36. So basically, I have to do a little bit of equation solving. 
those cancel out. I'm going to write the a squared on the left hand side and 81 take 36. Um, 81 take 30 is 51 and 51 take 6 is 45. So I just did that in my head. a squared is 45. Quick check 30 plus 40 is 70. 6 plus 5 is 11. Yep, 70 plus 11 is 81. Okay, as before, take the square root of each side to cancel out the squaring. And there's the exact answer. a is equal to the square root of 45. And round it again to one decimal place. Let's go get our calculator. And 6.70, so that rounds to 6.7 meters, rounded off to one decimal place. So effectively, it doesn't really matter whether you're finding the hypotenuse or short side. Always start the same way is my preferred way to do it. Okay, I'd like you to have a go, please, at finding the length of side A. So stop the video. Once you've finished, come back and check your work. Okay, welcome back, students. Well, once again, we start by labeling the long side. The hypotenuse is C. Again, there's already an A used there, so I'll use the A for that and call that side B. Write the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. In place of c, I put 9. In place of a, oops. In place of a, I just leave it as a, that's the unknown. And in place of b, I put 5. Nine squared is 81, five squared is 25. Okay, now before I can solve for A, or the first step in solving for A is to get the A by itself. So I subtract 25 from both sides. So 81 take 20 is 61, 61 take five is 56, quick check. 70 plus 11 is 81. Oops, should have written that with the a squared on the left. Take the square root of both sides. Squaring and square root cancel out. And there's my exact answer. a is equal to the square root of 56. And on the calculator, Square root of 56 is 7.483, rounding to one decimal place. The 4 rounds up to a 5 because this number here is 5 or bigger. So round it off to one decimal place, 7.5, and the units are meters. Okie doke, so we'll stop there, and uh, what you need to do now is hop into your textbook and go ahead and practice finding the lengths of unknown sides of right angle triangles. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.